Dixie D'Amelio is a famous TikToker turned singer who's released a number of songs that have helped us understand her as an artist and see what she stands for. Actually, it's more like what she sits down for. She seems kind of low energy in a lot of these music videos. Has someone been forgetting to crush B vitamins into her dino nugget dipping sauce? Of course, I don't expect a 19 year old to debut as a fully developed singer, but since she has the help of her record label, music producers, and film directors, I'm a little disappointed that her talent is wasted on videos as unoriginal and cliche as my passion for musical theater. How come at 19, I had to accept that nobody wanted to hear me sing Wicked at karaoke, but these influencers refused to admit that they're all using the same music video locations and concepts? A 50s diner, self-doubt graffiti, smashing a car. If you witness any of these things, you're probably in another influencer's boring music video. So stay tuned for another Dixie D'Amelio flavored installment of Clip A Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into those movies, TV movies, and YouTuber content. Then we apply general anesthesia to give it a nice nap while we peel back the layers of skin and look in at each little clip and decide what, 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 or okay, okay. And this is not my first time talking about Dixie D'Amelio on this channel. I've critiqued, shall we say, her acting in Attaway General season one one, as well as some of her boring vlogs on YouTube. Today, I have no idea what I'm doing and it is 6 p.m. and I need to film. <laughs> I'm not trying to send hate to Dixie D'Amelio. I think she's really fabulous for having made such an amazing career for herself at a young age, leveraging this platform that, you know, is so unique to Gen Z. I mean, I could never. But I mean, if you're signed to a record label and all of the people who are paid to help make you sound good and sell records are like helping and this is what you came up with, then mama, we need to have a word. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That lets me know that you wanna see even more content on YouTuber music videos like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you'll never miss new videos from me. I upload a whopping two videos every week and we have the best time ever. So if you are into that, then make sure you turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm peeling back the skin on another dead lady. <laughs> Sorry, that was grotesque. Also, I have merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus content and clip breakdowns and watch parties and stuff like that. Now this first video we're going to be looking at is called Be Happy and it was actually created and released prior to Dixie D'Amelio being signed by Hitco Entertainment, her current label. It was also shot in early quarantine, so we're kind of just doing it in her house. Let's take a look. Sometimes I don't want to be happy Don't hold it against me If I'm down just leave me there Let me be sad Since when did it become standard for the director to get a huge opening credit for their music videos? Like really Christian you want to take all of the shine up front for what is essentially going to be a glorified real estate video tour? Somebody said oh yeah your house will work great for a music video as long as we clear out all of the furniture and anything you chose to decorate with. Don't want to get dressed up to pretend but you are willing to get dressed up to take a bath. Interesting. Also, some of these vocals just sound like an auto-tuned conversation with a barista. Can I get you a muffin or any bakery items to go with that? No. Chips on my shoulder, only getting older. So I keep to myself. But sometimes I don't wanna be happy. You have the right to feel however you want, but I still think it might be a healthy idea to change out that bath water. And I'm just gonna say it, maybe try a shower after a long day of working in the coal mines. The thing about this black bath water is that it feels not only unmotivated, but also poorly executed. Like what is it supposed to be signifying? And also it just looks like some dirty water. I wonder if they could have experimented with different liquids, like if they had done milky water, so it was more opaque and dyed that black, then it would have maybe looked more solid or trying out different textures altogether adding gelatin to make it thick and goopy. And it's not even like it's a rented location. It's their house. You can put whatever you want in the bathtub. I remember once I worked on a movie, like a short film, and for some reason we were shooting at the Pfizer mansion. Pfizer is in the drug company that's making the current vaccine. There was a bathtub in the middle of the room that we were shooting a scene in, and it was my job to make it look like that bathtub was filled with blood when the lady was sitting in it. And I had to have blood all over my hands and all over my clothes and not get touch anything or get a drop on any of this expensive furniture, it was stressful. So I don't sympathize with them being lazy with their dark liquids in the tub. What's the matter with that? What's the matter with that? 
there's nothing morally wrong with it, but it is kind of making your music video feel a little boring right now. Like you don't have to be happy, but maybe at least try to make your sadness a little more interesting since we have the whole camera crew here. I just wish that I knew more about what this song was trying to tell me. Like, is it about women being told to smile or expected to be friendly and happy all the time? Cause that would be cool. Is it about Dixie saying something about mental health and it's okay to not feel okay? Cause that would be cool. But let's hone in on the message and maybe purvey it throughout the visuals. And you could still be in quarantine and do this lockdown. Like, is she sitting at her own birthday party and she's all down while everyone else is cheering around her? Maybe she's reading the news online and she's breaking down in the tub. Motivate these locations and then I could feel like a little more attached to what I'm seeing. In some ways you gotta break your heart to heal it. That's how I look when I'm following my Postmate drivers turn by turn while they go to get my nachos. How come she's singing about heartbreak, but she appears to be enjoying the lightning fast speeds of Verizon's 5G unlimited plan? What's on screen doesn't match the lyrics, doesn't match what you're saying, doesn't match the mood of the song. <laughs> also, I can't prove that those are the exact same jeans that Dixie wore throughout her time on season one of Attaway General, but my heart tells me it's true. Mainly because I want to believe that Dixie and I both only own one pair of jeans. We're so similar, I'm just as cute and tiny and little as she is. We go to Dixie playing with her dog, you know, just boring stuff. <laughs> it's a sight that's on my tongue. It's a sight that's on my tongue. Fine. Okay, Adele, giving us those bass notes. Fine. How come every time she sings the word but, I never hear the T sound at the end of it? Bye, bye, bye. Why do I feel like I just stumbled upon an awesome mashup? Everyone shut up while I try something. Bye. If what I just accomplished doesn't make me a professional DJ, then I'm f***ing glad Coachella is canceled again this year, okay? And I hope when it comes back, it's just a film art and wine festival and everyone has to wear shoes. I don't care. Also, it, I don't know why it makes me irrationally angry that the line is, it's the salt that's on my tongue. It's the salt that's on my tongue. Like, are you eating pretzels now too, mama? You need some Sprite? Sometimes I don't wanna be happy. The thing is, it is a very catchy chorus, that song. I hate the verses. Sorry, sorry that I do. But um, the chorus is catchy and it's the kind of thing that anyone can sing. So it's like, play the song, Mr. Piano Man type of deal. But I mean, it still has a lot of auto-tune on it for a really easy song. And just her presence throughout it, she seems really lackluster. Like, I guess she's not trying to be happy throughout this whole thing. So she doesn't have to smile. In the body language, it seems a little disengaged. You can still look sad, but still be acting. I get it. Like in real life, if you're unhappy, you just sit there and have a dead face. But when you're on camera, you should actually try to look a little more sad. Like. Just let me be sad. I hate that you can hear the auto tune like add an extra note to her final word there. She goes, just let me be sad and sadder rather than just let me be sad. Here, you can hear it. Sad, sad, sad. Dixie, sweetheart, you better get out of that water. You do not have the energy to fight off a great white. I'm surprised they even let you in the pool without a life vest. All right, next we're looking at the song One Day, which is produced under her record label. And it starts with a brand new, higher budget look. We'd be laying in my bed and you'd randomly get up and leave. Okay, no one go to the bathroom while you're hanging out with Dixie or she might make a song about it. And when you say that he randomly gets up and leaves, I mean, there's gotta be more to the story to give me some context to your relationship. The song just sounds too much like her conversation with her ghostwriter who was like, and then he randomly got up and leaved. <laughs> leaved. And they were like, okay, perfect. That's the first line. More that I gave, the more you held back. Now I am emotionally starved. Stuck on your ex, you're stuck in the past. Aw, I didn't know Wednesday Adams was in the vagina monologues. Every time she says you stuck on your ex, I hear you suck on your eggs. You suck on your ex. Yeah, I do. I swallow them in one big bite like a snake. <laughs> Can someone please, I'm trying to be nice here, just direct Dixie to have a little more screen presence. Does her footwear need to be more lightweight? Like she's really looking like a statue. I'm again, not trying to blame Dixie, but there's a director on set who can try to get a performance out of her, right? Every video we've seen of her so far, it's Senorita Lethargy. I think she saw this outfit on a plastic hanger and was like, wow, that's great choreography. Basically the first half of this video is just Dixie being around this car. Like, I don't know why it's covered in potting soil. This car it's like inexplicably dirty and she still wants to put her butt on that like honey Truth is that you really broke my heart one day one day i was really 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 sad one whole day i missed you really 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 bad 
How come whenever it's time to make a music video, these influencers want to go all demolition derby on some old Hyundai Sonata? Have none of you heard of Cars for Kids? K-A-R-S Cars for Kids. That's a tax deductible donation, sis. But no, everyone wants to live their Carrie Underwood fantasy of smashing a car window, even though, spoiler alert, that's safety glass. It's not gonna break too easy. I woke up and it was strange. All that I felt was relieved. I enjoyed the visuals of the yellow petals and the pink pool. It looks like how I feel when I drink crystal light lemonade. But I was a little distracted by this overhead shot where you can clearly see the matte lines of where they started to clone the grass and the trees. And you can really tell that the repeating pattern of those trees is identical. I would have loved if they could have found a way to make it just look like all petals on the ground around them, but hey, you know. Cringing at those memories like the time that you left me alone at the party when I didn't even know anybody. I think it's fun being at a party full of strangers because then I get to introduce myself to new people as a distraction while I steal their wallets and clear up the cheese plate. Now we get to the part where we have our big money feature from a top hip hop uh, uh, hip hop pop pop artist of today. I love how they added the sound effect of her walking in high heels as though we haven't already seen that she's wearing platform sneakers. I think this whole getting out of the car while the song plays on the stereo is something that every music video director tried to do in the early 2010s. As a way of making things feel a little more cinematic. But to me, it's played out. Come on, we didn't pay you to direct No Country for Old Men, so stop with the cowboy booty sound effects and cut the music back on. But the party can finally start now that Dixie walked into this diner. They seem like great friends. You would never know that Dixie D'Amelio and Wiz Khalifa actually met on set that day. Like Dixie, you paid him to be in this video. You don't even want to sit at the same table as him? Okay. I love that he has so little to do at this lunch counter that he just starts talking to the waitress. Okay. This featured verse is definitely the most enjoyable part of the song. So I'm like, okay, yeah, some words. You're telling me a story, and darling, you can't take no more. You walking out the door and I'm lying like what you waiting for. Oh, she had to sit at a different table so that she could get in all those cameos with her sister, Charlie, her new boyfriend, Marley, his friend, Barley. Also, I just want to remind everybody that we've already seen this particular location, which is Cadillac Jack's Cafe and Pink Motel in Sun Valley, California. And music videos now from Dixie D'Amelio, Trisha Paytas, and Gabby Hanna. Like, LA, California. California is a big place. Can we find some new places that might be cool to shoot something? Like, is anyone trying to do anything original with their music? Mm, I struggle to see how. I struggle to see how one more day. And as usual, Dixie D'Amelio just seems a little bit like unwilling to be there. Like she doesn't seem like she fully wants to participate in this work. Nice, slightly embarrassed shoulder bopping, Dixie. I know, I can't wait for it to be over either. Also, does no one want to explain the tonal shift in this video? We started out looking like Saw 4 and we ended up at another sock hop. Okay. okay. Let's dive into one more song that's even more recent called Roommates. This one has a cold, futuristic vibe. Ooh, what's that? Mismatched footstep sound effects? Must be another boring video. There just doesn't seem to be any conviction in anything she's doing on screen, even just walking to that couch. Like you'd have a Barbie doll doing it. I feel like the people who are working with her aren't trying to get good performances out of her. They're just ready for her to show up and like the video will be a success because she's in it. I don't necessarily see evidence that Dixie D'Amelio has been wanting to be a singer for her whole life, acting or doing things like that. Like it just seems like something she's now doing as like an obligation because she has this huge platform she's trying to re-monetize. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm still waiting for a song that sounds like a smash hit. Dixie, are you sure you know how an acrostic poem works? Because so far we got Sag. <laughs> Tell me if you like the hook of this song. I don't think it's bad, but I don't know. I got plenty of roommates with a vacancy sign. Yeah, I got plenty of roommates and they're all in my mind. Most people just call those thoughts. She sounds like me explaining to my parents why I needed my own apartment after college. I have enough roommates all in my head, okay? I'm dealing with all of these thoughts and powerful emotions. That should be enough. Oh, okay, do they pay any of the utilities? No? Swell. So glad. It's a pet peeve of mine when you can see the shadow of the camera appear on the actor when it gets close. And it happens a lot with these like music videos because they try to cover them up with their quick cuts. They don't know that I am out here, what? Looking for mistakes. Yeah, he knows every part of me. Causes all my anxiety. Just ain't fair. It shouldn't be there. Does 
60s psychiatrist work out of a freight elevator? This video does not really push itself with the visuals. They were like, she's wearing blue lipstick all of a sudden. That's f***ing crazy. You should be gagging. Trust me, I'm gagging. I got plenty of roommates, even when I'm alone. Never known any silence. I turn my head in a hole. Okay, there's no way that they intended for the word butt chin to appear on screen as prominently as it just did. And we've also seen all of this in videos before. When the person is attacked by a word cloud of their worst YouTube comments in some way or another. A lot of influencers tend to do it. I guess they think it's artistic. This video also never really goes anywhere. It's just like generally blue. The theme is blue and sometimes there are pipes. Oh, I get it. She's all her own roommates. Is that like how I claim all these plants as dependents on my taxes? Shh, it's our little secret. This doesn't have the crescendo for me that I feel it should. Like this is her, the height of her song. And she's like, I think that I'd like to live with all these roommates. It's very timid. I feel like if I were working with her as a music producer in the studio, I would have encouraged her to give a vocal performance that would match like the energy of someone who's performing on stage. So like, I think that I'd like like, let me feel the energy in your vocals so that when you're performing it, you can match those. But I feel like she was recording this without any energy, so she's performing it without any energy in the music video. I want to see more from her. No auto-tune. That's really a battle you want to start with the internet because fact checkers have recently surfaced this clip. Bye. 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 That's you. And that's not a criticism. Honestly, most commercially produced tracks will have some sort of pitch correction on them. Maybe she's just still learning how to use her voice. Um, she's got lots to learn, I think, this one as a musician. But I mean, at least she has all the money she needs to make the videos, whether they're good or bad. She gets to like, stretch her legs creatively. So maybe the next few things we'll see are going to just get better and better. What, no footstep sound effects? How will I know she's wearing shoes? Also, they definitely should have used a more vibrant shade of blue. I can't see any of what she scribbled over this, but they also just could have used a more original concept entirely. So, what the what the go? What do you guys think of these Dixie D'Amelio videos? Am I canceled for talking badly about somebody who's 10 years younger than me? I'm sorry, I just see what I see. But I, like I said, I think she's gorgeous and talented. We just gotta nurture that talent a little bit more. I leave that to the people at Hitco Entertainment and LA Reed. Let me know which YouTube music videos I should cover next in another clip breakdown. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more videos like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on bells and you'll always be the belliest. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive content and fun extras. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for getting all of these roommates with me today. I will see you next time.